Hi and welcome. This is Pete, N6QW, and this afternoon we're going to take a little tour through a project that I've been working on, and that's the refurbishment, upgrading, and modification of the Heathkit HW101. Uh, I purchased the unit off of eBay for a very reasonable price, and with the thought of uh, updating it to something a little more modern, and that updating feature includes uh, the installation of a digital dial from uh, almost all digital electronics, AADE. And uh, there are lots of references on the internet uh, relative to making improvements in the radio, including oh, swapping out the uh, capacitors that uh, probably have exceeded their life, and also uh, something about leveling out the gain distribution throughout the uh, transceiver and to fix some known problems. Uh, many of the tubes that were originally supplied with the heat kit are kind of marginal and uh, so all the tubes were replaced, the re power resistors replaced, out of tolerance resistors replaced, resistors were changed uh, to satisfy some requirements relative to performance improvements and uh, a lot of the bypass capac capacitors looked pretty sad so those were replaced as well. The crystal filter bothered me a little bit. It didn't uh, sound quite right on the upper and lower sideband. I know that's probably directly linked to more of the crystals themselves. But uh, I had a second filter that I swapped in there and put in place where the CW filter was. And you could tell the difference. So I removed the uh, filter was there and installed the uh, alternate one that I had. So you're going to see a video of how I, uh, how I included the uh, uh, digital dial into the uh, project and I'm uh, very satisfied with the results so uh, stay tuned. One key feature I wanted to cover was how I installed the digital dial into the front panel of the HW101 as uh, you're f anyone familiar with the HW101 they have a semicircular dial that uh, the, the dial rides behind on a on an epicyclic drive so as you turn the front knob, the dial changes in front of you, and it's pretty typical of the uh, lower end Heathkit uh, single sideband transceivers. Um, I wanted to put the digital dial in there, which uh, the display is uh, a rectangular shape that's uh, approximately uh, three inches long and about uh, one and a half inches or so wide. So um, I took uh, great care in laying out the uh, panel to find out where I would exactly have to cut uh, the the hole in the front panel and the accession so that the digital dial would fit in there with uh, without any margin so it would look like it was seamless and uh, this is where you measure 40 times and you cut once and I did a lot of measurements and uh, convinced myself that where I cut would essentially do away with the semicircular um, opening in the front panel and the discussion and allow me to insert the bezel and the uh, digital display and uh, I started first with the succession to uh, cut the cut that material since it's plastic, and uh, I used a tabletop milling machine that I have uh, to mill out that hole. And once I had that milled, then I used to uh, overlay the succession on top of the front panel, and was able to draw on the front panel exactly where the hole had to be. So uh, locating the hole on the front panel uh, was a simpler uh, task, and of course that's aluminum material. So I checked that up in the machine and uh, cut that out with the milling machine and cut it just a little bit bigger uh, so that I have some wiggle room for adjustment of the, the, the actual display, the only, uh, LCD display and that worked out very well and it, uh, it almost, uh, almost is perfect, almost is perfect because the knob, uh, front panel knob is just below, just rides below, does not touch the bezel uh, that holds the LCD display so it uh, looks like it was done in the factory and uh, that was pure luck but uh, again I can't oversize, emphasize measure 40 times and cut once. We're looking at my modified. This is N6QW, and I have just recently modified a Heathkit HW101 to include uh, the digital dial from almost all digital electronics. 
and uh, there you can see it right there. It gives you the frequency display and showing it's on 20 meters in upper sideband. Uh, not too difficult to do. It's just a matter of measuring pretty accurately uh, where you need to be uh, to, to replace the standard um, <clears throat> circular dial readout on the HW101 and to cut a uh, rectangular hole that the uh, visual display will fit in. And I'm trying to get it back far enough so you can see the, uh, the numbers. Um, we also did some extensive modifications inside the radio. There are many references on the internet to uh, uh, leveling out the gain, changing component values, fixing some known problems. So uh, change quite a bit of the capacitors, except it's pretty difficult to get to the capacitors here on the driver board that we're looking at right here. But I was able to uh, make some changes to capacitors on the uh, on the uh, modulator and on the uh, <coughs> carrier oscillator board. Also on uh, the uh, bandpass board. And you can see the uh, new yellow capacitors and I replaced some of the mylars. And also replaced a couple of the resistors uh, in the back here uh, on the uh, voltage dropping resistors. And I see one of them is uh, getting a little brown there. So uh, and it's even a higher value that was specified. So there was a lot of work uh, done here to replace components. And uh, but the most difficult part was, of course, to uh, put the include the digital display in here, which you see here. There's an interface uh, board consisting of some uh, uh, little trim pots to adjust the, the levels of the drive coming from the, it takes the three signals essentially from the uh, HFO, the BFO, and uh, the, uh, the uh, LMO. So it's the BFO, HFO, LMO, or VFO, and uh, these little three pots was recommended by almost all digital electronics to do that. And there you can see a pretty good shot. I just mounted on a little sub channel or sub chassis right on the back of the uh, or on the side of the uh, VFO. And then you can see the display electronics uh, piggyback board right there and right here. So uh, it's pretty nice. I found that uh, this also aids in uh, determining uh, just how, uh, how much uh, the radio drifts. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Once you, uh, once you let it warm up, uh, maybe you've seen 30 hertz or so. 20 hertz or so over like a half an hour period, so uh, not too bad by today's standards. There's a contest on today, and so a lot of band activity, and I'm going to just tune around here. Let me see if I can uh, tune this thing. And so you can see the uh, dial changing. It's kind of interesting uh, the way it upstakes the display. You've gone way past the mark already. And there we go. And you see it also shows shows low, it'll display lower sideband, upper sideband, and even uh, CW when you do the CW transmitter. And uh, you have an option on how you display down to tens or hundreds resolution. And so I've got it down to tens. Actually, uh, how I did this, I didn't use the original. I did not use the original panel from the Heathkit HW101. Instead, uh, I purchased another panel and um, uh, accession, and actually cut that one up. So if this thing didn't work out, I could return the radio to where it was uh, initially. So anyway, this is the tour of the HW101, and uh, all the changes. Here's another change I made here. Uh, I was just testing, instead of using the uh, O-ring type drive, I actually put a dial, uh, dial cord with a spring. And so that can be done, although the back one is going to be a little more tricky to do. 
but at least with one on there it doesn't has that rubber feel that you normally get with two the two uh, o-ring type drives so uh lots of lots of time about one week total elapsed time to change the components and so far i have about uh <clears throat> about three hundred dollars invested in new parts uh the dial drive mechanism one new tube this hummer right here this is the six uh gw8 and this uh this hummer is 25 dollars used so don't ever break that i actually broke the one that came with it uh literally all the tubes have been changed except for the final and the reason is is that Heathkit used these Elmeco tubes, and they're evidently uh, not very good, and a lot of problems with the radios were traced to, to those tubes. So in essence, uh, uh, these have all been replaced. Uh, so most of the, there's a quite a few common tubes, six EA8s, uh, six uh, AU6s, and uh, so having a stock of those from prior radio restoration made it pretty uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, virtually. Uh, most of the capacitors, except for the RF driver board right here, have been changed uh, because they were accessible. This one has right below that sits this band switch mechanism with a whole series of uh, boards, and I don't know how I don't know how you repair anything on that board. Uh, it's a major disassembly to do that. So uh, one of the plans we also had was to replace the uh, VFO here with an LMO. I do have an LMO out of an SV101. But the problem with that is, is that the shafts don't mate. So to, to accommodate that uh, is a real nightmare. It can be done, but uh, a little bit beyond my skills. By the way, the cutting of the rectangular hole for the front panel, I happen to have a, a tabletop milling machine. So I milled the accession first, and then I milled the, uh, the panel second uh, to be able to line it right up. And actually, if you cut out that uh, semicircular area where the dial normally shows uh, you can in fact uh, fit the the bezel that uh, is available from Olmstall Digital Electronics as well so uh, I, I got a new panel uh, it cost me uh, very little money to purchase the panel and uh, so this way I cut it up and uh, so if I ever need to return the stock or if I sell the radio I, ha I kept the dial mechanism that was there and also the uh, front panel that was there so uh, again, this is Pete N6QW, and you're looking at my uh, modified uh, HW101. Uh, actually, these uh, are quite readily available on uh, eBay, so uh, it, it's probably worthwhile to someone considering uh, wanting another second radio to uh, purchase one of these radios for, because for not too much money, it's uh, pretty easy to uh, upgrade and modify. And I'm pretty uh, got really good on the air reports. One of the changes is a replacement of the 6AU6 uh, audio tube, which uh, kind of sits right in here. Matter of fact, you'll see one. I kept one of the uh, spare dial drives there, or the, uh, the O-ring type, just in case the uh, string cord didn't work out because uh, it's a real bear to replace that. Anyway, uh, there was a recommendation of replacing the 6EA8, uh, which uh, kind of sits right in here, right below that over There it is, uh, 6EA8 with a uh, 6 CQ8, uh, which I did, and it's just a drop-in, and uh, the tube is not very expensive. So uh, there's one other change on the underside, which I can't show you right now, but I'll do that in the sub subsequent part of the video, is I, I built a special conditioning power supply to take the 12.6 volts out of the, uh, there's the back side of the, uh, the little board that has the game pot adjustments. Um, a special little board, and actually I used one piece of Radio Shack perf board, cut the side uh, ends off. On one end I built the uh, three little pots, and on the other end I built the conditioning power supply. And the conditioning power supply consists of two pieces. Uh, uh, one, uh, it, it takes, it samples the 12.6 volts AC, half wave rectifier. Uh, on one piece it goes into an LM317 that I have set up to produce uh, 9.66 volts. Uh, two resistors, a 220 and a 1500, give you 9.66 volts. And um, I uh, use that to drive the basic electronics. Uh, the basic electronics on the digital display can be uh, anywhere from 8 to um, uh, nine, uh, 18 volts. So I chose 9.66. And then uh, on, the, um, uh, on the supply for the backlight, uh, I have another half-wave rectifier in the 7805. So the, the 7805 and LM317 
uh, does double duty in that it lets you uh, clean up the it provides the DC voltages to operate the display and also cleans up the AC and provides some isolation and that's on a small board on the underside and then uh, I'm going to take a subsequent video and show you that show you the underside whoever built this uh, did a kind of an okay job uh, but I can tell when they put the wiring harness in either they made and I'll mention that in a second uh, they sure burnt a lot of wires in the process, uh, not very careful with the soldering iron. This did have uh, a modification to it already to accept the um, the uh, 650, the SB650 digital display. So there were already modifications sampling the BFO, uh, the HFO, and the VFO, and they were brought out to the back panel per the instructions. So I just used those same pickup points. Uh, for the three inputs into the uh, almost all digital electronics uh, DFD2 uh, display. Um, I did find that it'll read the, the frequencies uh, on 80, 40, 20, 15 and the lower end of 10 meters, but on the upper end of uh, 10 meters beyond 28.5 it does not uh, display the correct numbers. They're, they're off by about 2.5 megahertz and I haven't quite figured that out as yet. So. I need to uh, need to resolve that, but since I don't operate uh, above uh, 28.5, it's not a major problem. But uh, I'm going to contact almost all digital electronics about that. They do mention about if you have insufficient uh, drive on the HFO, a high frequency oscillator, to uh, jump or some wires. I did that, and that did not resolve the problem. Anyway, uh, this is N6QW. My name is Pete, and you're looking at the uh, work I did here on the HW101. I'm going to add some pieces to this and I will post it on YouTube. And if you've been keeping track, that display hasn't moved in about the last five minutes. So anyway, N6QW, and I'll end this piece and uh, cut, splice a couple more videos here so you can see in detail all that was done. But this turned out pretty well. I'm pretty pleased uh, the way this thing uh, ended up here and being able to replace that dial. Now, there have been some postings on YouTube about people that have put this on as an external box and I'm I, I don't know how many have done it internally but I, let me just answer the question that can't be done oh the other thing too is the uh, the vernier drive which is the Jackson brothers got seemed to be a little bit loose and so I purchased a uh, variable uh, vernier drive a six to one epicyclic drive from Orion Orin Elliott products in Ohio and it was not very expensive matter of fact less expensive and it's a little stiffer and a little bit uh, more to my liking, so I just put that put that in its place. It's just a drop in for the the standard Jackson Jackson Brothers drive. Now the hole here in the panel where it says zero set, one other modification that could be made to this is to include uh, the X lock uh, VFO stabilizer from uh, Cumbria Designs and uh, the, the X lock three. I have uh, built the X lock two and X lock three, and they're on my TR sevens, which are sitting behind here there's one and there's one below and uh, simply magnificent turn it on and the frequency doesn't move and so you have to have a panel display about uh, locking and that hole right there would hold the uh, the LED which would show the lock frequency so um, indeed it's uh, very propitious the way it laid out the panel uh, kind of a model mechanical design for a, a 60s design really uh, a lot of thought went into it so uh, some good solid engineering and it's a testament that you're able to uh, take this product uh, some 50 years later and actually uh, do something with it. But there we are, and uh, frequency still on, so that's kind of good. Anyway, N6QW, I'll end this part and uh, include uh, additional a shot of the power supply board that has the two voltage regulators on it to clean up the uh, voltage uh, shown on the small piece of perf board. This is N6QW. Pete, here's a kind of an overview of the chassis itself and just see some of the things that had to be done. I replaced the filter. I thought there was something wrong with the filter. I had an extra one here and replaced it right there. And this is concludes the video.